Hi guys, so I've just been reading through an article written by Martin Lewis on the increase to student loans um, from 2023 onwards. Um, some pretty big changes being made um, and I've not seen much in the media about this or on the news. So I just thought I'd make a quick video uh, to kind of just summarise in his article, um, just so it kind of gives a clearer picture to anybody thinking about going to university from 2023 onwards. Um, just a clearer picture of what it will cost you um, moving forward. Um, I'd just like to say this is my first ever YouTube video so I have made some notes but like I say bear with me um, I'm going to give it my best and hopefully by the end you will get some value out of it. So the article was headlined uh, as new student loans to cost many 50% more from September 2023. So like I said we're talking some pretty big amounts of money. So it says, in England, September 2023 will see the biggest shift in student finance for over a decade as new Plan 5 loans launch for new higher education earners. On the surface, these changes may not look like much, but in practice, it will actually increase the cost of university by over 50% for the average graduate learner. And for some, it may even double the cost. So for some, this is going to be pretty big changes. Now, tuition fees are currently capped at £9,250 a year. Uh, this is in England. I believe it's about £9,000 in Wales. Um, and these are capped until 2025, 2026 uh, academic year. And that cap remains in place. Um, but for most, that means that over a typical three year course, uh, when you actually combine the full loan uh, value, uh, of the course, plus living costs, because people take generally extra loans out for living costs. That means the average three year course could cost as much as £60,000 or even more. So these are these are pretty big costs to be taking on, especially very early in uh, someone's career or just someone's life in general. Um, but interestingly enough, when it comes to student loans, um, it isn't so much the amount that you borrow that is the important factor. Um, it's more about what you repay. Um, that may sound strange, but you'll understand what I mean um, in a minute. So when it comes back to uh, when it comes to paying back your student loan, the way it works is you actually pay nine percent um, of your salary uh, every month. Nine percent of what you earn will be taken. Uh, to go towards paying back your student loan. But um, it isn't 9% of your whole salary. It's actually 9% of uh, a figure over a threshold. So the current threshold is £27,295. So if you earn 27000 then you won't pay a penny towards your student loan because you don't earn over the threshold. But for anybody who earns over that money, such as £30,000 salary, then you will pay 9% of anything between the £27,295 mark up to the £30,000 mark. That's the, where that chunk of money will be taken from. So from 2023 onwards, that figure of £27,295 is actually changing. It's actually being lowered to £25,000. So what that means really is that the threshold being lowered means it will drag more people on lower in lower paid jobs into paying back their student loan. Whereas before those people on less than 27,000 would have been protected from paying it. Now they're going to be dragged into it. And it also means that obviously people on salaries higher than the threshold means they will actually be paying more of their, more of their salary will be kind of in the section that takes the 9%. So instead of it being from 27 upwards, it's now from 25 onwards. So you pay the 9% is effective on more uh, to an extra £2,000, which means every, you know, it, it, a large amount of money over a long period of time. But a key bit to take on board is if you never earn over the threshold, so current, the threshold will be 25,000. So if you never earn 25,000 pounds a year, then ultimately you will never pay back a penny of your student loan. 
So that is one key thing they haven't changed. But I would say that if you go into university uh, and you come out with a degree, then I would assume your intention is to earn more than £25,000. Um, so in reality, I don't know how many people that actually affects in terms of people who don't ever pay a penny back. I'm sure some people fall into that category, but I can't imagine many do. But as an example of what you will pay back um, when you move on and you get a job and you're over the threshold, the way it works is, um, well, if you were on £24,000, then you would never pay a penny because you're below the threshold. If you get a salary of £26,000, then the way it would work is you would pay 9% of the £1,000 that is over the threshold. So the, for, for, you, for what they would take off you is £90 a year if you were on £26,000. If you were on £35,000, so fifteen, uh, sorry, £10,000 over the threshold, then they would take off you £900 a year because that's 9% of £10,000. And if you manage to get to £50,000 salary, then they would tax, uh, well, take off you 9% of £25,000 because £25,000 over the threshold. So you'd end up losing £2,250 a year. That would be taken to obviously go towards paying off your student loan. Now, in terms of actually paying the money back, you don't have to make the payments yourself. Um, once you're enrolled, once you're with a company, um, just through your payroll as normal. This is how most people's taxes are paid. Uh, you enter a system called PAYE, which is pay as you earn. Um, your taxes are paid this way. Your national insurance is paid this way. And it's also how your student loan will be paid back to. Um, so automatically every month before you get your salary, that 9% of whatever you owe, that will just be taken and it will go towards your student loan. You never have to worry about it. Um, so you can never miss a payment. Um, you'll never have debt collectors at your door because you missed a payment or anything like that. It's all taken, um, it's all kind of sorted out for you. Uh, slightly different if you end up being self-employed um, because obviously self-employed works slightly differently, but the same way as you um, would submit a self-assessment tax form every year to declare your taxes that way, you would just pay your student loan through the same process. Um, obviously, you just need to set aside the money look like you would with your tax every year to just go towards paying off the student loan. Um, in terms of the new Plan 5 um, loans that obviously for a student's effective September 2023 onwards, uh, I believe the first payment will not be taken, um, will not be due until April 2026. So obviously that's three years um, that's that's for your course to run three years. And then once you hopefully get a job after April 2026 is when they would take your first payment from your salary. So if you were to drop, what that means is if you were to drop out from university, um, maybe after year one or year two, you won't immediately be required to start making payments because like I say, the first payment wouldn't be due for those students until at least April 2026. So at least you've got the comfort of knowing if you were to drop out for whatever reason, you aren't immediately required to start making payments. Now, the second of the big changes they've made, obviously the first one being the threshold being lowered. The second one is currently uh, there is a period of time at which if you do not repay your loan, that the government will basically clear the balance of the loan. And that current Time scale is after 30 years of you having the loan. So after 30 years, if there's still a balance that you're paying down and you haven't managed to clear it, then at the 30 year mark, the government will take over, clear that loan, and you're no longer eligible to keep making payments. And the loan is cleared and you're, you're debt free, essentially. Now, the big change they're making is from this year, that 30 year period is now moving to a 40 year period. So students will uh, be required to make another, a further 10 years worth of payments before the government steps in and clears the loan. Now, on the face of it, this may not seem like much and you, you might not think about it because it's years in the future. So who thinks 40 years ahead or 30 years ahead? But in reality, this is a huge change. Um, 
and it means pe most people are going to be paying thousands, if not tens of thousands, more due to that 10-year pushback from 30 to 40 years. Because that final 10 years, most people later in their career are earning more than they would earlier in their career. So that final 9% that you're paying for the final 10 years is, is the most you'll ever be paying on your student loan. It's the biggest chunk that you will be paying back. So that, that small change of 30 to 40 years is actually a huge change uh, and it will cost the average person um, significantly more. That's kind of where the big cost comes into. Uh, one good thing to note though, about student loans in general, is no matter what you borrow, whether it's 10,000 or 100,000 um, pounds, that amount you borrow doesn't go on your credit file. So it does not affect you in terms of maybe buying a house later in life, buying a car, uh, the things that you get on finance, like say a house with a mortgage, car on finance. The student loan will not um, penalise you um, in terms of having that debt because it is a debt, but it isn't treated the same as other debts. So it won't penalise you uh, for going to university in that respect. Now, the amount, as I said before, the amount you borrow is not the key factor when it comes to Plan 5 loans. They work a little bit more like a tax. Um, and what I mean by that is what you repay each month is not dependent on the amount you borrowed. It's dependent on uh, solely on the amount you earn. So to kind of put that into some context, um, for new 2023 starters, um, what you will repay, like I said before, is 9% of everything that you earn over the threshold of £25,000. So if we take the salary example of £35,000, this is where it might make a bit more sense as, as it's more important than what you earn as to regardless of what you borrowed. So if you owe £20,000 in student loans, and you earn a salary of £35,000 per year, you will repay £900 per year. However, if you owe £50,000 in student loans on a salary of £35,000, you will still only repay £900 a year. Because, like I said, it's not about, it's not based on how much you borrowed, it's based on the salary you earn. So, even though somebody could have borrowed a lot more than you, they may only repay the same amount of, as you if they're on the same salary as you. Um, the prediction under Plan 5 loans from the government is that 54% of all people will clear their loan within 40 years, which means 46% will never clear their loan in 40 years. So that means for 46% of people, they will be paying that 9% for their almost their entire working career. Um, they'll never pay it off. And the government will step in at the end of that 40 year period and they will clear the balance. Uh, for the 54% of people that will clear their loan, the vast majority of those people will only clear their loan in the very final years, just before the 40 years. So it will still run over 30 years which is where it would currently have, the government would have stepped in to repay it. Um, so you'll, you'll go into the 30 years, but you'll repay it before the 40. So that kind of gives you a rough idea of how long you may be holding on to this debt. Um, the vast majority of your working career, potentially 30 to 40 years. Um, one of the positive changes they have made, there is a positive change, um, is that the, it's to do with the interest that gets added to student loans over the course of you holding the loan. Um, currently, it is worked out as uh, RPI, uh, retail price index, um, kind of to do with inflation figures. So it's kind of inflation plus 3%. That's what they currently charge as the interest. But however, that is changing to just RPI on its own, no extra. So it's just linked with inflation. So whatever inflation is um, every year, that is what is, will be added to your student loan. So in terms of what the Bank of England's predictions are for inflation, they like it to be around 2% a year. So 
that gives you a rough estimate over the long term of what interest might be added to your loan. Obviously, at the moment, inflation is kind of running out of control. Um, it's around the 10 percent mark. Um, so obviously, that wouldn't matter right now for 2023 loans. But if it was to stay consistently high, that also gives you an indication of what you could pay in the future if inflation stayed persistently high. Um, obviously, 10 percent would be incredibly high and would majorly factor in on as to whether you would pay off your loan or not. But I'd like to think it would be nearer the 2% over the long term. So you might be asking, why are these changes being made? Why is the government making these changes? Well, it's quite simple. The changes are being made to save the government money over the long term. Um, so under the current scheme, on average, for every £1 borrowed by an individual, the government actually pays back about 44 pence of every pound borrowed due to the fact a lot of people never actually clear their loans. They never actually pay them off. The government steps in at the 30 year mark, clears the loan. And that's how that 44 pence for every pound is worked out. However, under the new scheme, the government predicts that they will only pay 19 pence in every pound. So that's a big change from 44 pence down to 19 pence. Um, and that is obviously due to, firstly, lowering the threshold at which people start to pay. And secondly, increasing that 30 year payment period to a 40 year payment period. That shifts a lot of the cost ownership onto the individual who took the loan and it takes it off the government, picking up the balance at the end. So that is ultimately why this change is being made. So to summarise... Um, from 2023 onwards, university is without a doubt going to cost individuals a lot more money. It's going to cost the average student significantly more than it would if you were a student in 2022 or previous years. So you might be thinking, well, the answer to that is don't go to university. But actually, it's not as cut and dry as that. It's not as black and white. Um, stats actually show that if you people who have a degree actually earn significantly more than people without a degree. So there is a quite clear argument to be had to say, well, having a degree is still very valuable. Um, and, you know, there is value in taking on a loan to get a degree to then earn more money and potentially you'll be better off in the long run. But it's, de it's, it's definitely a hard one to say, you know, there are plenty of jobs that you can get that earn good money without a degree. But there are obviously plenty of jobs that you can get that earn good money with a degree. Personally, I think it comes down to more so the individual job you are interested in doing, having a clear vision of where you want to head in life, what you want to do with your life. Um, if there's a specific job that you want, such as a teaching job, or maybe you want to go into law or into uh, kind of the medical side of things, those type of jobs require you to have a degree. So if you want to head into those avenues, you don't really have a choice. You need to go and get your degree. But if you're not so sure about where you want to head in life, then maybe university isn't the kind of the answer right now. And this is the kind of person I'm kind of directing this video to, because I think you need to be sure about what you want to do before you just decide to go to university. So hopefully with this video, you will, the costs will be a little bit more clearer as to what you're taking on going forward. Um, and all I would say is talk to as many people as you can about it and try and get a clear understanding of what you want to do, where you want to head before you go ahead and make that decision to commit to three plus years of university taking on big loans, such as 30 to 60,000 pounds. Um, so hopefully you've got some value out of this video. I really hope so. If you've stuck with me for this long, um, I want to thank you. Um, like I say, if you've got value out of this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Um, I'm hoping to do more videos around personal finance uh, going forward. It's kind of what I'm hoping to base the channel on. And um, if that interests you, then like I say, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.